Now you're listening to Now with Men, 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 the podcast. Hi, everybody. Thank you for always tuning in to the Men, 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 the podcast. Another day, another session. We've been told in Tanzania it's safe now, but what to endele kujiangale na what to endele kujilinda tu. Au vipi? This is Men, 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 the podcast. Na kama unavyo, like what we always say, kumba we are discussing everything, but specifically about mental health na tunazungumzia zaidi kwa wanaume. Na kama ambapo tulikuwa tukisema kwenye kila station au kwenye kila episode ambayo tunafanya ni kwamba tunazungumzia mental health kwa wanaume for a lot of reasons lakini main reason ni kwamba tunajaribu ku unpack na ku unlearn what we've been taught as men lakini vile vile kufanya watu ajue namna gani jamii na jinsi tunavyoishi tunavyoishi na tunavyokuwa na tulivyo uh, wanaume wa Tanzania ni kwa namna gani baadhi ya vitu ambavyo vinatuzunguka vinaweza kuwa na impact kubwa sana kwetu especially mentally that is why we are doing men 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 the podcast kama unataka kutu, kutu, kutuambia kitu unaweza kutupata either twitter or instagram at men the podcast at men the podcast both kwenye twitter na kwenye instagram nadia is here nadia Yes. Hey everybody. Tunakudai <laughs> bia. Yeah, Nadia Nadia is a therapist slash counselor slash mwalimu slash yoga teacher slash mambo kibao anafanya. Lakini kwenye men the podcast kwenye men 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 the podcast na kwa gani kwa sababu she's a therapist lakini pia ni mtaalamu wa mambo ya mental health. Kwa ni mtu ambaye anaweza ka na ni mtu ambaye mara nyingi anatupa professional perspective ya vitu ambavyo tunakuwa tunavizungumzia na kama unataka kuwasiliana na Nadia if you feel like you need therapist to kuongea naye feel like unahitaji mtu wa sekta hiyo kuzungumza naye you can reach uh, Nadia either on Twitter or Instagram kupitia account ya Mind Matters TZ Mind Matters TZ and then moja kwa moja utaenda kwenye bio yake kuna link itakupeleka kwenye website ya page yake and then there utapata njia kibao za kuweza kuwasiliana naye so it's so good um leo bwana we are joined with uh, um i've known this guy for i've known this guy for a while now i've known this guy for a while and uh, he's one of those i would say uh, <laughs> um unique beings i would say ni mmoja kati watu fara body unique sana um and i've ni katika watu ambao nime nime witness progress yao through social media progress mean growth uh through social media ever since I started following him a couple of years ago from only tweeting about football na kubisha kila kitu na nini to being mtu ambaye squeeze amekuwa reasonable and some of it he breaks down things just come I'm like who the hell is this guy you know who the hell is this guy i'm talking about president of Tanzania on Twitter. By the way, Nadia, if you're on Twitter, you should know this guy. He's our president on Twitter. Yeah. Well, Michael, El- you know that I, I'm like a newborn on Twitter. I'm still finding yes. my feet. Yes. Now I'm telling you the people you should know. Ricky Bosch is one of those guys you should know. Okay. I, I am honest. Ricky. Yep. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good, Mike. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute, man. Talk about Mendo Yurumani. I'm like, Kwanza, what are you doing in Germany? Just kuweka mambo saa. Unasoma, unafanya kazi. Au unabishana tena. It's, 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 it's a little bit of both actually. I'm I'm studying here in Nasoba for Kabia miaka mitatu sasa hizi doing my masters. Um, but I'm also working because they allowed to do a uh, working student up uh, I'm working and studying at the same time. Yeah, and you don't use me nika something about you want to do your PhD as well. Come on for sema, you know corona has uh, messed up a lot of a lot of things. Uh, biashara yes. nyingi zimepinduka. Mimi na bahati kwamba nafanya kazi kwenye kampuni ya e-commerce. Kwa hiyo um, the world is going down, we are going up. So uh, nimeamua kwamba you know maybe a good time to you know go back to school and get another degree or something. Mzee, ah, ongera sana mimi I'm done with school. Sasa <laughs> hivi um, focus yangu na shule ni kwa wale mabinti tu ninaoelea nyumbani ila mimi I am done. Kila Larry. Dad <laughs> kabisa. So uh, so yeah, we are with Ricky today na tunazungumzia topic moja ambayo ni sensitive kidogo na in topic ambayo we've been thinking about uh, kuiongelea kwa muda mrefu sana kwa sababu hate to love it or tupende to spend ni moja kati ya vitu ambavyo vina to impact sana 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 wanaume. Um mimi personally growing up I always looked I always looked up to my dad and uh what we what wengi waki wanajua au watu ambao wanajua wanajua kwamba nikianza kumwongelea mzee wangu for me the baruti is he's a man's man kwangu mimi yani you know you it doesn't get bigger than that it doesn't get better than that he is yani kipimo cha wanaume kwangu mimi it is that guy you know 
So naelewa umuhimu wa kuwa na father figure na umuhimu wa kuwa na male figure lakini umuhimu wa kuwa na baba kabisa kwenye maisha yako. Sababu naona naona kabisa mchango wako kwenye maisha yangu. So a couple of days ago Ricky you tweeted something ambacho um kama watu wa kuona watu ambao hawako Twitter wanatusikiza they don't know uh we will play it here as well tutaiweka kwenye podcast pia sikike lakini ilikuwa ni dialogue kutoka kwenye the fresh prince of bel air sikumbuki ilikuwa season gani lakini i think ni the most famous clip kutoka kwenye fresh prince of bel air ambapo will smith alikuwa anazungumza uh, um, will smith alikuwa anazungumzia uh, baba yake kwa ameondoka kwa he was talking to uncle phil rest in peace to james avery so he was talking to uncle phil kwamba baba ameondoka Uh, he's let me down so many times of course not in this exact words like he's let me down so many times but i've made it here without him so i'll still anybody doesn't can deal with wish even uh baada yake baada ya kwa muondoka so in case you don't know this is the clip i'm sorry will You know what actually this works out better for me you know the slimmies of summer come to class wearing next to nothing you know what I'm well, saying well it's all right to be angry hey why should i be mad i'm saying at least he said goodbye this time I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I Hey, could you know do. what? You ain't got to do no nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm gonna be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him. Right? Mm. I learned how to drive, I learned how to shave, I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. Die with him. I need him then and I don't need him now. Well, well. Now, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that cuz ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? But Rick you tweeted kwamba as a kid um that grew up with an estranged with an estranged with an estranged ran out of town father this monologue by will smith hit me hard back in the days it is the mantra i grew up reciting in my heart every day so um ricky take us back a little bit na utukieza ku expand kwenye that tweet um zaidi unaweza ukatuambia what really how how did that how did that uh, monologue speak to you you know when you ukiwa mdogo you sometimes kuna vitu huvi notice unajua um i grew, I, i grew up in a, in a family of five kids right um i'm the first born male like ni mtoto wa wanne unaona kwamba i have three older sisters and i grew up around them and uh, my mom at that time was you know hustling kwa kikisha kwamba watoto wote wanapata chakula wanaenda shule na you know we have the clothes behind our backs you know sasa yeah. kichotokea ni kwamba um ukiwa mdogo kuna utundu tundu unafanya unajua mama na kuchapa unakasirika um yeah. and then you ask yourself like yo what's up like baba yuko wapi kwa nini inakuwa hivi Imagine, you don't really understand what's going on but you, unajua unasema ah, ni kilala nikiamka mambo yataendelea but yeah. ilikuja katokea kwamba i was watching fresh prince like, you know ile nostalgia unaangalia episodes za nyuma and then yeah. i saw that clip and it really hit me hard kwamba nikaanza kuelewa kwamba what was happening in my life ambacho sikuweza kutambua kipindi kile and i really connected to what Will Smith was saying to 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 yeah. Uncle Phil i mean i didn't have a, i didn't have a, a male to say to but in my heart I was like yeah. you know what if i had someone to tell it to i would say it in the exact same words and um, if we take it back to the beginning how how what do you remember growing up as a kid Uh, I'm talk about male presence or, or male figure presence or male figure absence what do you remember I think iki tu natokea kwamba kuna kuna stage mbili the first stage ni ukiwa at at the situation ukiwa mdogo when i was 8 when i was 10 i was 9 I didn't notice I didn't notice much you know nilikuwa nasoma boarding school kwa hiyo nikienda boarding school unajua kwamba unakaa uh, boarding school and boys dorm unasikiliza Professor J album and everything they don't scare una scare other boys are talking about stuff you don't know about you know wanaongelea schana wanaongelea you know puberty they're talking about masturbation you're like yo what's 
what is all this? Because I grew up with sisters. Me and Kenan Yumbani, all the, by, all the time, um, my, my elder sister, um, much love to her, she used to be the... Um, the strict hand of the family. Ye no alikuwa natukuza kipindi abacho mama, ye yuko and hustle um, in the office working hard to make sure she has enough money for all of us kids. She, my, my elder sister, made sure that we grew up structured. And maybe ili situation kwamba I never had that, you know, the talk of a guy to guy, the upbringing of a man, you know, you go and kind of my sisters, you know, we're listening to, to Spice Girls and everything. And that's why I grew up, Mike Unadu, I grew up, yeah. I love pop more than, than I love hip hop, right? Yeah, so I yeah, just grew yeah. up in that they influence. Know. Yeah, so I yeah. grew up in that influence. So, if you go to boarding school, then you go to fault, you na to go to other boys. And my train of thought and my tra- way of thinking is really, really different for, from them, right? And I went to boarding school, to Natisa, um, just turn of the century. And I think that was literally, that was the first time I kept in the amateur African Cup of Nations in Anza. And we had the television. I was just cool to go to television palais in Equa. And I used to watch football just in passing, but I, because other guys, other boys were going there. And I felt like if I don't go watch football, I wouldn't understand what's going on, right? So I needed to match up with what's going on in their lives to to feel like I'm not missing out on being a boy. So not just in passing, but and I think my second sister, um, Patricia, which she's also in here, Germany, Alianza could notice and that is when she even started alikuwa na jeans yake moja na kumbuka alikuwa anaandika ameandika El Hajj Diouf ameandika Thierry Henry just to make sure kwamba anashabikia mpira and I started loving football just because you know my second sister was into football and my the, the rest of the boys now so manao are into football so I didn't notice I started noticing kwamba kuna kitu ninapelea while niko shule boarding but I didn't not I didn't I didn't notice what exactly it was nilikuwa nafuta tu mkumbo wa vijana wengine but then when I reached adolescence, when I look back, this is the second thing now, when I look back and look at what did I miss at, at a certain age and at a certain time, I can see exactly what I missed. I can, I can analyze what I missed. But at the same time, I, I tend to appreciate that my mom filled in the gap as much as she could yeah. and she raised me to the boy that I am today. And shout out to my first sister, my second sister, and my third sister. But to be shana kila siku, you know, watoto ano fatana. Shout out to my sisters for bringing, for raising me that way. I feel like I failed to to impart this type of knowledge to my younger brother Pedro, um, because you know I didn't have anyone to teach me the boyhood to the boy to manhood. You know, you are. So I didn't have that yeah. knowledge to my younger brother. I didn't know what what was right and what was wrong. By the time I figured out what was right and what was wrong, Pedro was already a man. You know, so he was already a man at that time. So I missed out on that imparting knowledge to my younger brother, Kasabu. I feel like I missed out on the father figure. But at the same time, that gap, my mom filled it up and did, I think, did even better than I expected. And I respect her for, you know, doing things that other, that my dad should have done. I mean, could have been to not alijaribu kuniongelesha so even nikikumbuka na nasema Mungu wangu why did i put my mom in such a situation where she had to yeah. take me through that and and that's and that's basically it yeah and uh, but yeah, be, be, before we we and, and i understand what you're saying especially kwenye swala la ku la ku la kwanza kujimix na the boys kwenda kuangalia mpira and because as a kid growing up all we knew is how to fit in right yep. that is yani as a kid kazi yako kubwa ni hii yani kwamba how do i fit in with the, how do i, I you, you need that sense of belonging and i think nadia kama mtawa um, anaweza kaelezea zaidi hapa but before we go that ricky um if you don't mind that is and if you think i'm pushing a little bit too far let me know yeah um if 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 you don't mind telling us what do you remember about what do you remember about your about your father and what really happened for him to did he actually work out or things just he didn't work out with mom or he never you, from your point of view or you you felt like he never played a part in in like what happened for him not to play a part in your in your in, in your growth again it's not about him this is about you but we just want to get the we just want to get the context of the of the whole situation that is if you're comfortable yeah i mean the truth is like like I, I said, like when I was young, when I was at that age, I had a lot of questions, and I was trying to 
nilikuwa najaribu ku reason kufikiria kama yeye kwa nini amefanya vile nini kimetokea but when i grew up i realized like you know what first of all ba- on the basis this man does not deserve my time of space mimi kukaa na kwanza kumfikiria kwa nini kafanya vile and then second najiumiza mimi mwenyewe kujaribu kufigure out why a person did that you know i cannot i can never be him i can never be in situation kajo why he left and why he, he he became even when he left he became you know hakuepo katika maisha yangu unaona kwa hiyo he left when i was very young I, i don't even remember much about about him that's that that's that is to show you that he left really when i was really young i don't even remember much of what happened and you know what was that only thing i remember was my mom was always there and that's and that's the yeah, biggest yeah. thing that i remember and um okay. ukiniuliza after that when nilipoanza kupata akili na kuelewa moja jumsha moja and what not the only connection i had with my father and this and this is the, this is a funny true story right nimemaliza yeah. nimemaliza um uh, primary arusha school and i did i did fairly well right kipindi kile kuchagula shule za serikali was a huge thing right was the big um, deal yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah and I felt real good because sabu I knew my mom was working real hard to make sure kwamba nasoma Arusha school kinacho nakumbuka ada ilikuwa kama 150 per term miezi mitatu and that was huge money it's it's a lot bill. of money yes yeah, a lot of money sasa nakumbuka anasomesha mimi anasomesha my younger brother Arusha boarding school and nikisikia kwamba nimechaguliwa shule ya serikali which is hella cheap right nimechaguliwa sinoni a secondary school which is really cheap i felt like yo nimemtuisha mama mzigo mkubwa sana kwamba naenda unajua no more secondary school ambayo yeah. ni ni rahisi sasa unajua my dad lives moshi kwa hiyo arusha na moshi is on the way to dar es salaam right so mm-hmm. i think my mom thought it was a good idea to you know pitia moshi salimie baba tell him what you did right like tell him like you know you did this and i went through right and the funny thing was like And, and this is the this is the memory that I still have until today. I mean, it's something that I usually don't speak about, but it's something like he gave me he gave me a fucking football. Like, dude, I just graduated primary school, <laughs> good grades, mean get secondary, and you you're giving me a football. And it, was, it wasn't even a new football. It was like a used football. And it was like, and I was like, what? And I was like, really? Like, yeah, and I was like, oh, like Pira, Pira, Pira. Na ni mpira mbao umetumika. I remember like na nimeenda ndani ndani moshi. Na kanipa mpira migu. I don't even know what's going on right now. I was like you know and that, I think that moment that right there when I got the football in my hand that was when I realized hey on this journey of manhood I am alone. Like do not expect anything else, you know. And I th- and I said thank you for the ball and you know uh, being gracious and everything Shima Kasalbia other extended family by na kapale moshi and I bounced and that was the last interaction that I had uh, physically with him and I was, and I and I said like from that day on in this journey of manhood um that that is it memaliza bas wow uh, okay moja so that <laughs> as funny as it is it explains your love for football on the other hand yeah, it runs yeah. in the family <laughs> <laughs> but 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 unajua nafikiria if naje remember the the first episode we did on the podcast with Mark um kuna something he said um this is the guy if you haven't listened to our first episode you can always go back and listen to it the guy said kwamba he he was talking about jinsi gani ndoa yake ilikuwa na matatizo na nini and of course na yeye pia alikuwa bila baba kwa muda mrefu sana and he said one of the things about you anahisi vilichangia ndoa yake kuto kufanikiwa au ndoa yake kuvunjika ni kwamba he never had a male figure to give him game in terms of like how to deal with women na nini you know just those things about we usually take for granted as boys because even me me siwezi kwenda kuongea na mama yangu labda mambo ya ndoa any perspective ya mama kuhusu mambo ya ndoa inaweza ka tofauti sana na perspective ya baba you know you and as a man you, you, you of course you need them both but you as a man you need the men's perspective on bio inaweza kakwambia mike you know what don't worry about this don't panic these things happen this is how we resolve it navit navit kama hivyo so he never had that and so because of that how could you how to deal with some situations now listening to what rick is saying i can actually feel i can actually feel the connection between these two in terms of presence ya 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 mwanaume kwenye nyumba nadia what's your take on this so come on like no no nadani we've discussed a bit of this in the previous episode as well is when come especially kids wakao na tukao tunakuwa 
we tend to look at uh, our role models, our first role models, our template uh, to, to kind of direct us, guide us on how to conduct ourselves, behave and be, we usually look up to our parents and it's usually the same sex parent. Now, you know, we, we tend to identify with either our fathers or we, we look up to, let's say for young boys, it's the father who is generally the template of this is what a man should be like, this is what um, a man does, and etc. And then once they're older, then you, you learn for yourself uh, because a lot of fathers are not perfect. So sometimes you know, other templates are like Wasonzu Isana. So it's really important who are a male figure. And Apia, when you look at it, a lot of research is pointing towards fathers being a really strong predictor or a really strong force when it comes to children, not just boys, but the girls, men and women as well. Uh, the father figure is one of the figures that helps us develop our emotional um, intelligence, you know, our emotional capacities. Uh, and overall intelligence, let's just talk of, um, in, in, in that manner. So Baba, when I, like they play a really important role. Uh, I'm curious to know, Frederick, who for you was that male figure? So I know that it sounds like your mom tried to play both roles. Um, and from, from what you've, you've shared so far, from what I've heard, me, she's played them very well. Like she's managed to, to balance those two roles quite well. But I'm curious to know, was there ever any other male figure in your life growing up? Aside from, I know you said boarding school, it was an all boys school. So you got to, to interact with, um, with boys there as well. But I'm, I'm curious. Um, actually, the body school is like male and female. I, I don't think I would have survived oh. in an all boys school, but um, <laughs> um, okay. the truth is, yeah, but, but, but only. The, the truth is, the truth is, I never, I actually never had like. First of all, like like I told you, like when I was young, I didn't notice, I didn't know what I was missing. Right, I just knew I had so many questions. I didn't know what I was missing, so I didn't know the importance of having one. Right, my mom was there; she was doing her best, and I didn't notice that she was going above and beyond mm-hmm. so i think if we get you um basically from six um, my second sister um she got married right and she made young um um rest in peace um he was the one who was there i mean you go kifika on fridays on fridays early morning literally i usually receive two texts First message at that time was like my sister, my first sister. She was asking me to provide for her vampire diaries on, on a flash disk. Uh, I would go and, and provide it for her. And the second yeah. message used to be, she made yango na yo, nakuja kukuchukua jioni, tunenda tabata, we're going to chill. And I went there and I saw my sister and I saw how they, how their marriage worked. And I saw my nephew come into this world. And I was like, yo, you know what? This is the perfect family. This is, this is the picture perfect family growing up la- right in front of my eyes so every weekend and issue he's having issues or we talk about it if i'm having issues he calls me and i need to pick up calabash we talk about it yeah. so that was like and i was like yo this is what would this would this have been my life if I had like, you know, a father figure early on, like, you know, um, taking me through my first, you know, my first love, my first drink, my first, I don't know, whatever I did back then. And I was like, I, I, I was having this when I was like age 19, age, age 20, when I'd already done a lot of stuff wrongly. And, and I'd already been through a lot of stuff without any person there to guide me through it. So I, I came to have this father figure, this presence there, I would say in and around the time that I, I went to I went to university and I was living I was living outside of home, living by myself with friends and this yeah. whole brave new world and Shemedyang and every weekend So that that dynamics and seeing how he was living with my sister and my nephew, that was like the first impression of like being present in a, in a father figure setting basically. Kuna siku mtu mmoja aliniambia kwamba you know what Mike I mean absence here huyu ni mtu mwingine pretty much the same story like ni ni kwamba na pia he grew up any baba aliwa bando na kila kitu mzee akaendelea maisha yake so wenyewe amekuwa tu ndio on. Akaambia kwamba growing up he ended up even if kia point kwamba anaingia kwenye toxic relationship na watu ana anakuwa clingy anakuwa very clingy kwa akiwa akiwa yani 
he could not let people go, especially in a relationship. It doesn't matter what on a mistreat VP for the fear of people actually walking out on him. Na alikuja kugundua hilo tatizo baada ya kuanza kwenda therapy. Yaani ilifikia point akaanza kwenda kwenye therapy sessions na nini. Ndio akaanza kugundua okay wait a minute. So I'm like this because this person actually walked out on me. Unajua? So it 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 had to reach that point yawe kuza kugundua. Have you ever felt um have you ever felt like somehow kwamba you are a certain way because now that you've done some in, uh, introspection some introspection na umeweza kukaa na umejiangalia na you know the more you grow the more unavozii kujijua mtu have you ever felt kwamba somehow kuna vitu pao kuna vitu uweze ku entertain au kuna vitu you do not want get you do not want to get attach yourself to because of absence ya who you mtu <laughs> honestly I, i like personally i think i think most of the, like from experience um for i would say for from a relationship point of view um some of my exes would say differently obviously but from an experience point of view is like um i have had relationships where i felt like I, i i i literally felt like i would die without this person like in terms of like and i felt like that i reached a point where it was really dangerous personally for me mm-hmm. and thankfully for the, the other party she realized it and she was I would I wouldn't work, I wouldn't use the word walk but she was like she, she knew what was going on and she wasn't afraid to speak about it you know she told me like yo uh, you should never let anyone else be the source of your happiness right you should never um feel like you have a huge gap in your in your in your life that you need to find someone to fill it up for you you need to accept yourself you know depend find a way to 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 amuse yourself before you you, you go out and seek mtu mwingine kama Uh, so mm. I think that was the biggest turning point a few years ago. That was the biggest turning point in terms of my relationships with, with people. Um, I think the only thing that hasn't changed uh, is because, um, you know, uh, Michael, you, I'm not married and like it's never been on the front of my mind to get married because I don't want to be a person, I don't want to be in a relationship where I either I'm forced or I feel like I have to walk out and I have to walk out on on, on a child. Um yeah. I want to be I'll I'll be like the, the most present parent ever if I ever become a parent. I'll be the most present parent ever. Come hell or shine like I, even if it doesn't wor- work out with my 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 wife or my whatever my partner, I will make sure I'm there for the first football game, the first dance she goes to for example uh our first recital whatever i'll be there for that child because i know it might not work out you know binadam doesn't uh, binadam so kama mtapatana miaka yote milele it's no it's not yeah, guaranteed forever it's not guaranteed it's not guaranteed but your blood my blood like 50% is there that's an investment yeah. that i would never leave aside ever so i think i'm in this situation where i i think about it a lot kwa mbele kupata mtoto kwamba i want to be the most present parent ever but it's just that it's just that situation kwa mbele chaji okay akili kwamba i will never um remove myself from my child's life whatever the situation and that's it come rain come sun to the same and yeah. sh- shout out to shout out to that lady who told you about finding your own happiness sounds, sounds like you are dating Jada Pinkett Smith <laughs> yeah she, she could have done a red table for me but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but Nadia um, I, I wanna this is something about you na nataka ku kuongea na Rick amekuwa very brave kuja na na kuzungumzia experience yake lakini tunajua a lot of people ambao either wamepitia similar situation and in some cases especially in african context na tukija kuzungumzia sisi ki Tanzania Tanzania as as wrong as it is kwa kwa mzazi kutoka kumjali na kutoka kumwangalia mtoto wake Somehow we've come to normalize it. We know a lot of families in Basel, a father walked out, maybe they had issues na mama, so father walked out, or maybe too, baba kumombe yake mwenye he decided to walk out na na kuacha mtoto wake. So wapo watoto ambao wamekua bila baba wengi tu. Tukizungumzia kwa watoto wa kiume moja, I would like to know from you what what what, what do we expect from I mean, what should we expect from such from such from such men? I'm glad what Ricky said it's, it's like for him I'm it's kwa muda I'm evaluate now he knows exactly what he's going to do and he knows what he's not going to do but then kumbuka Ricky amesoma Russia school Ricky he's in German right now Ricky he's exposed he's seen things you know and I believe if you know better you you do better but then what happens when your family is it tobazo this thing to me finally me kwa kama it's a normal thing how do we deal with it now, then he, the the 
this us norm, normalizing ni on one part may, perhaps i don't know our systems not just our uh, family systems but our our government systems our um, legal systems we need to to take this a bit more seriously so unajua there no one can stop a, a parent or no one can stop anyone from walking out of people of our lives you know that that's one thing into uh, if if they decide to 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 not be present at a some fathers are present you go up on your bani utamkuta na kuja class but they are not present you do you guys get what i mean like yeah. they're absent but they're physically there but they're absent you know and that's the other issue that and it's a whole other dimension so now the, the most important thing is perhaps our legal systems because we need to find a way uh, yes you can walk out yes you can choose to not be present but I think the the one way that I, I I think the rest of the world has managed to to have them still at least be there uh, or their presence still be felt um is them being required to either um contribute to the child's development um whether it's financially uh, most of the times they don't focus a lot on emotionally which is I think even more important than financially so kama sisi hapa naona a lot of let's say come if, if we have a lot of fathers walking out of their families because sabab there are no consequences to their actions now it, it it's it's become normalized because sabab it's easy they can you can have a child with women uh, or you can be married and decide to to cheat and uh, and marry another person and just spread your seed because again that's that's a, a statement that's been out there you know it's it's kind of praised a man if you can spread your seed across the continent you know it's been kind of looked at as, as as something that's great which okay maybe yes but but no <laughs> if you can't provide for all the seeds that you're planting then um, i think you better not now then what if a consequence is introduced it will discourage this behavior when you with anything with behavior if it's entertained if there are no consequences to your actions then it persists and it will not just be you will not just walk out of one family if it's a habit you probably walk out of two or three families the impact the implication it has is huge on the people that you're leaving behind i'm not sure how they feel moving on but a lot of the times it's the children that that get the the tough hand there you know because you have to now grow up justifying because a lot of kids growing up with um, households that are either par- one of the parents has walked out the children learn to overcompensate so you find that the children try to overcompensate so that they can support the the remaining caregiver so that the care, caregiver does not feel that they're incompetent when you are to are very intelligent children god god bless them you know it's it's like extremely resilient and even though situations that they're in are extremely crucial and extremely can be extremely difficult and frustrating and tough they still are quite resilient and decades research is pointing out that children in single parent households all almost always overcompensate they will, um like frederick you you mentioned your sister took up a, a certain role as well that she also was there and made sure that you were all in check when your mother was away that that's an example of a child overcompensating because yes it it's a great trait but no child should should be put in such a position you know and your mom did not uh, ask her to do that you know it is probably was a huge help she was a support to you all but imagine what does that what what that does to to your childhood you know you have to kind of grow up before your time so nadani as a society nabidi to once to introduce some some form of not not punishment per se but there needs to be a consequence so Account- uh, people have to be accountable to be exactly exact that's the exact word you know we need to be accountable for whatever reason uh, your dad walked out of the family for his probably his reasons are valid uh, we do not know them at least i do not know them but it, it, when you're in that position when you're a parent and you're bringing life I mean you need to be a bit more accountable you need to take a bit more responsibility and as as you said marriages can end you know divorces happen you can separate like any you still both both parents are still responsible for the children that they bring into the world so i don't know how we can introduce consequences to people's actions because that's one of the ways to um discourage such a behavior 
Yeah, I want to ask, I want to ask uh, Frederick. Victor Frederick sounds so weird with some Frederick Corner. Don't believe that, Ricky. Sorry. Um, and I know this is something that I'm, one of the, uh, one of the reasons I know uh, this episode will resonate with a lot of people is because apart from you being a man now, um, grew up without a father figure, I also know a couple of ladies about Pia, but Bazao actually worked. And one of them, uh, Baba Alifariki and Nelikwa Nwanganaya Kana Amba Michael I literally feel nothing You know I know He's my dad I'm a Fariki And I'm coming But Sikumjua Now We never had any connection So I feel nothing I mean Am I weird for feeling that Am I weird for not feeling anything But Because At the end of the day He's still my father You know I did not know what to tell Because Baba was like I, I don't know I I mean It's it, For her it was just like to mingine yutu, amefariki, you know? So, na nikita kurudi kwenye point ya Nadia yongia kusawa kuovercompensate ambapo Ricky yamongia kusu dada yake na vitu kamevu. But then, I want to ask you, Ricky, personally, have you ever felt kwamba because my mom went through some stuff, I would, I do not want her to go through the hustle again. Have you ever felt like there's something about when I'm doing with Kwamba and I'm going to overcompensate, maybe consciously or subconsciously. Kwamba, you've been overcompensating for your mom right now, now that you're an adult. So first of all, it's like, um, so like when my dad, when my, when my dad walked out, he walked out when half of us, I would say half of us, like me and my, my young brother, did not have our brains intact yet. We weren't, you know, quite, quite dog, so we don't remember every, anything. But but my yeah. sisters grew up with him for a couple of years, so they have a good relationship with him, and that's good for them. I mean, um, they can they still talk to him, they still engage with him, and and I, I mean, hey, that's their life. I mean, that that's all good. Yeah. Um, in terms of what I feel or what I do not feel, honestly, I feel less than nothing actually. Like whatever happens, I'm almost like I get information like either. Um, he got a job or he, I don't know, he got a, he got a, whatever he got, something good happened in his life, something bad happened in his, in his life. I'm indifferent to it. Like it doesn't affect me at all right now. And um, I don't find it weird because like, Hey, he didn't invest anything emotionally into my life. Why would I invest anything emotionally into his life? So it doesn't make sense at all. And there's nothing there to invest. And when it comes to like um, my mom right now, I feel like, I actually feel like, like I'm I'm underperforming, I'm underachieving. I would, if, if if in an ideal world I would like to be the way you know uh, Cristiano Ronaldo treats his mom, buys an all island or whatever for, for, the, for the mother, you know, right? I want to be I that person. I want to be that person. They're like your mom. You don't have to worry for a single penny. You don't have to worry for anything. Um, yeah, you know, like literally, you've got it. You got you've got anything like from medicine to you know whatever. She wants to start a garden. You want? I want to be in that situation. I feel like she did way too much. Like Mike, if I tell like, do you know how hard it is to go through puberty? And your mom has to talk you through that. Do you know? Do you, do you know how that that that, that is weird? Like you wake up one morning, so you wake up the next morning, you have pubic hair, and you don't know what what's going on in your life because at that stage, at the biology, I'm just I'm just a foundation, and you don't have an older brother to tell you anything, and then your mom has to tell you this because your sisters is gonna be weird for them to tell you this. So how do you put a, a woman who's been there for your life for all your life? to start telling you intimate things. I'm grateful that my yeah. mom, Alisoma, biology, and she studied wildlife, so science is within her, like, you know? So she can talk yeah. me through it in a scientific way without, but I had to, you know, sit with my mom and she had to take me through that dialogue. So I feel like I haven't achieved even half of what I'm supposed to achieve to, to you know, compensate for what my mom did. And, 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 that's, and that's the truth right now. Did she give you the, the did, you, did you get your first sex talk from her? Oh, you never got one? Bro, I, I, got, I, got, I got everything before. I'm like, I got like, like, you know, like talk about, um, the talk about um, the state of how men wake up in the morning, you know, to how your first love <laughs> is. Like she, yeah. she went, she went deep. She went scientifically deep, and I was like, "Whoa!" At that time, I was like, "Okay, so this is what I'm supposed to do, and this is what I'm supposed to do," you know. Um, and she was like, "If you have any more questions, my door is always open." And at that time, I was like, "Oh wow!" And then, but, but right now, when I'm remembering at that moment in my life, I'm like, 
puberty you're like shit when, I'm like whoa like no haikutakiwa niongee na mamaangu vitu kama hivyo unajua itakuwa hata unajua mjomba kaka you know someone awe pale kunielekeza vitu kama but you know she did that she she never complained about it she jumped on the gun and she was like yo njo tuongee you know unajua siku labda unachapwa kumbe ni mtu anakukalisha na kuongelesha vitu vyo tuzima and I'm like right in kikumbuka sasa kikumbuka alipokuwa anaelezea unapata aibu unapata uoga kwamba your mom went there you know but at the same time you appreciate kwamba she went above and beyond what she was supposed to do so i feel like i haven't accomplished enough for her right this you i have i have um, a little bit of um, an opposite um, experience on this do do mind up kuja kwa na easy conversation i try so much to to trade carefully because i think uh, mimi i grew up with a very present father and like they were super involved super super involved when you when you mention it and i have I have three brothers na dada mmoja. I have my little brother na na kaka zangu wawili na na dada mmoja. But mzee was super involved kar- yani katika katika maisha ma- 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 yetu wote, you know? Katika maisha yetu wote. So uh, I cannot really but right now thinking of it, I cannot imagine my shanga get turn off VP kama asinge kuwa present. Na because of that, I feel like ni wajibu wangu mimi kuwa present kwa watoto wangu because my father was for me so it it was very unfair kwa watoto wangu kama mimi nikiwa absent kwenye maisha ndio maana i also try najitahidi sana kuwa kuwa involved kwenye maisha ya watoto wangu as much as i can cuz for me it's like it's the only way i know najua it's the only way i know and i like what ricky said kwamba he 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 ayame sema kwamba to make sure kwamba if he ever becomes a parent he makes sure kwamba he is always present kwenye kwenye maisha ya watoto wake but coming to you nadia Do we feel like some some aspect even to in achaga negative impact kwa watu in terms of uh, in terms of connections in terms of what to maybe could not play the significance of family kwa watu wengine na vitu kama hivyo do, do do you think that that might happen as well oh, that happens as well it happens as well um, but then it depends on when you know, everything is very holistic and i like doing things um, as a whole um, you see so um utakuta some families the father is absent or leaves walks out but the, perhaps the, the other parent that's remaining isn't also as present so you have kids growing up in such a setting other environments let's say like Frederick's the, his your your mom was very present and she played both the roles she tried her best to 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 play a father figure a father's role and a mother's role together. So, in other other households you find the mother just plays the mother's role and because the father has walked out that father figure is not present at all and it's not felt. Unajua so all those different scenarios create very different pictures of a role at the end. And also the element of nilongelea a role model. So here we're talking about a father uh, walking out. So when children in in a household where it's a single parent household and the father is not not present and there isn't a, a male figure that can lead to a whole different picture. So the negative consequences it, it's a possibility. It's not a, a given that all children growing up in a single household a single parent household experience negative um, outcomes or uh, there's a negative implication by that but in a tegemea sasa the setting walokuepo na jua inategemea the effort that the mother put in when it comes to child child um, child care child rearing and parenting it comes whether or not there was a male figure around so it doesn't have to be a direct father but it can be like an uncle figure an older brother figure um a, a male figure that was in the community someone prominent that you looked up to you know um a, a male figure in the church you know so in a tegemea yeah, like all these all these little bits and pieces that that happen in our lives is intricate details play a big role now it's very possible to have negative implications you know so now i like the fact that you talked about um, i know frederick said that if he ever if you are ever to become a father um, you're going to be a present one which is great don't be too present because then you know as kids they like their freedom sometimes <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> <laughs> but you know um some you find some fathers who will tell you their life story that their father was no, not there the father abandoned them and then they go and play out the same scenario and that's a good pick like right there is where you can you can pinpoint and say okay this is this is where like it, it played out negatively 
Because if it, that experience gets you to perpetuate similar experiences to other generations, then either you haven't worked through uh, that loss, because losing a parent is a loss. Uh, and whether or not um, you care for them, whether or not you feel anything emotionally, there is a significant loss, a, a psychological loss even. Um, and some people manage to, you know, work through it, process through it. When Guinea, they don't process through it. And that's when now Unanza can perpetuate the same cycle. You know, when we talk about these cycles, these generational toxic cycles, that's where they're coming from. The vicious from. cycle. Yes, these vicious cycles are coming from, most of the times people have gone through pain that they have not dealt with. And so they just de- deal the same hand of pain to their next generation. You know, and Apo, you will find a lot of parents, a lot of fathers justify, me babangu wa kunifunisha vitu vyote, me babangu did not do this for me. So, but I turned out perfect. So I'm doing you, you know, I'm doing you a favor. And that's how they make it sound. Wengine, you know, mm. and that's just an indication, Kamba, they did not process, they did not deal through the loss they face. They face. And Ukishafika is an adult, you can rationally uh, think through the loss, but we need to keep in mind my inability to book and also like give a lot of importance to the fact that the one who experienced the loss is not the adult you. Although experience your loss is the child you. Yeah. So how have you helped that child version but, of your but, but Nadia, how do you how do you distinguish that? Uh, uh, and the human mind is very, it's a very complex mind. How do you how do you distinguish that? Uh, that I'm very back and so you might come kubu as a side. How? Well, therapy. <laughs> um, <laughs> More money to Nadia. Pay Nadia for this. No, therapy is a great tool because there's a lot of different techniques you know, that we can access our inner child. Our inner child is always there. Now, attack, like me, I tend to look at adults as just big children. Me, to me, adults, me, big kids that have, have now a lot of freedom to run around and do things on their own. You know, as a child, ever, there's people watching out for you, controlling your actions. But as an adult, you are more in control of yourself. So I tend to look at adults as just big kids with more freedom. So that inner child plays out in us. Like, I'm sure, okay, just observe yourself. There's a lot of things that we do that we will sometimes take a step back and be like, okay, that was a bit childish. You know, these are the, this, this is our inner child coming out. And our inner child, as you said, it's a part of you. So it's not, you can't really separate that. This is a child Michael, this is an adult Michael. You're both Michaels. But then there, um, these two coexist. And so when, when it comes to healing your inner child, you just simply access. And how do you access? You can just sit and kind of reflect, uh, not think with your logical part. Because you develop it after you. From the age of 18, when you enter your teenage years, is when your frontal lobes start to properly form. You know, from, from the time you're born until like your teen, the frontal lobes, that area of your brain that reasons and makes sense of things, is not present. You know, it's something that's growing and molding and developing. Ukshakua adult, that's when it's it's solidified. It's the youngest part of our our, our brains. And so ukika unataku access your inner child, you access the emotional side of yourself. You know, and you can incite that through vision, um, imagery, you know, thinking about you can imagine your child version or your child self. However, that's why I say go through therapy. Because if there's a lot of trauma, if there's a lot of loss that you you experience as a child and you just access that on your own and put, take yourself back to that place, whatever comes out there can overwhelm you, you know? And as kids, not just as kids, as humans, our brains are very, God bless our brains. Uh, they have a way of protecting us. So if there's any loss we experience that we couldn't, um, we didn't have the capacity to deal with as a child, our brain finds a way to mask it, shove it into the unconscious. So as an adult, you come and want to access that part of yourself. You need to really be quite cautious. Kwa sababu, you do not, it's like a Pandora's box that you're opening. Because if it was such a huge loss that you did not process as a child, processing, at, processing it as an adult, it will be a bit easier. But if it was such a heavy emotional load, it will, not, it will take you quite a while to kind of digest through it all. And it... it it would be more ideal to do it with someone who knows how to contain and how to support you through it. Because the minute you open that box, closing it and pretending like that pain was never there is 
difficult. So it's either you just leave that box alone or you open it with caution and be ready to 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 process, to work through whatever it is that comes out of there. So you look at Ricky's situation is the father pretty much walked out when Ricky could yen hakumbuki mapema sana. And then kuna kuna wale wengine ambao anafika mpaka miaka 8, 9, 10. And then the mm-hmm. father walked out. You know? Um how do both of these people cuz babu is in different situations kabisa ukiangalia okay, situation ya Ricky na inganisha na what Trevor Noah said kwamba when Oprah asked him about him growing up poor kwamba so well everybody around us was poor so how yeah. if you don't know it who you be kama you poor yeah. so Ricky in, 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 in the Ricky's case ni kwamba hakuwa baba akuepo toka akiwa mdogo so probably he didn't even know the importance of having him around mpaka baadaye alipokuja kuwa mkubwa compared labda na kama baba ange ange angeondoka wakati Ricky is 8 is 9 is not really koyo nadhani there's a different level of trauma pia hapo naje no am i right well so it's pretty much the same thing again it's contextual you know but it's pretty much the same thing. okay let's let's take Trevor's example growing up in poverty we're all here but poverty will affect us regardless people living in poverty their health is not as great their opportunities are not as great either so there are there are these factors that yes we probably not consider them because we're in this mess so I, i you know we don't know any better but kuna these fundamental things that happen whether or not we acknowledge them or not and it's the same with a parent uh, um being absent an absent parent you know what whether the parent leaves when before you were born whether they leave after you've turned 18 the pain is the same it's just that your processing of the pain will be different you know your approach to dealing with that situation do itakuwa tofauti lakini yale maumivu yanabaki pale pale you know it's still loss is loss whether you lose someone um uh, when you are a child or whether you lose them when you are much older doesn't doesn't really take away from the fact that you've lost something now that's that's kind of the case as well when when a parent walks walks out even when you know the reason why they're walking out it still doesn't make it easy i think the the implication the pain the the, the magnitude of that loss remains the same in ila to our levels of processing to zina badilika and the, the environment we are in that will influence okay. us our outcomes you know and how much it will affect us um ricky as um we, we as we are, we are winding this up yeah if there is one thing above your you would like to if you get a chance to talk to to your old man if there's one thing i would talk about what would that be it wouldn't be like I, I honestly my I don't have I really don't have much to talk about with him it to just be one thing like why the football like really like in your house like <laughs> you could have given me money yeah najoni uh, mchaga ndio like you could have given me money like <laughs> why the football though like like that was such that was such a that was such a pivotal moment in my life um yeah. metaphorically nikikumbuka like a football like it doesn't even relate to my has, education has, it, has 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 that impacted your love towards football in any shape form or way nah if i'm like honestly the person who <laughs> actually made me love football so much was my my second sister i still remember jinzi yake maandika el hajj diof thierry henry yeah. she made me love football because she was crazy about it then and uh, you know yeah. being around boys at that time watching football africa cup of nations yeah. and the world cup to 2002 that made me love football a lot mm-hmm. but by that was just like it was just a weird moment of him giving me a football i would just ask him like why the football though like what's up so that's the only thing i would ask actually and that's a great yeah. question i think i think you should hey you should you should definitely ask him <laughs> because no worry you know the emotion come and tena kosa emotion closure for closure radia for closure No, I mean, imagine imagine there's something very symbolic about that football. Okay, this disclosure. Maybe it will disappoint you the response. It'll just be like, well, you know, that was the only thing no, I had. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even <laughs> expecting anything. I just want to know like like what was his train of thought at that time like a football like what's up yeah. like hey. I just want to know like what well, well, just curious about it. Exactly. Yeah, I think, and I think, uh, find out and you should like share it with your twitter family i'm going to start following you like now <laughs> yeah and uh, and another thing ricky for for uh, this is a, on, a, on a serious note for people who their their fathers walked out and they've had to do it on their own with their mothers if there's one thing about kutaka kuambia especially for men 
in this world. But as you know, men, 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 the postcard is it is about men. So especially for men or young boys, what on Okua, Wapua, Mabro, Naota Water Skiliza. If they above either fathers walked out, they didn't grow up without father figures, they didn't grow up with, with no male figures of it to come over. Based on your own personal experience and where you are right now and how you turn out to be in Avionavionna my shack. If there's Kituna Shaka Kwambia, what would that be? If there's one thing or two or three or four or ten things when I talk Kwambia about your experience and our growth, what is one thing above Ungetaka for him now you or one thing above Ungetaka wa washkiri kwenye hii kwenye kwenye based on your personal experience kwenye hii I wish that I wish that this episode would be listened to the people who really need it and to me personally it would be kids that are literally going through it right now rather than people who are grown up like 21 22 who have you know yeah. been past it I mean like like Nadia said they need to to deal with it shakwa mkubwa you need to to open that box and deal with it step by step and realize what went wrong but I feel like the kids going through it right now the way i was back then i needed someone i needed i didn't even need someone to yes i needed someone to guide me through going from boyhood to teenagehood to adulthood Manhood. yes i did that yeah. but i needed someone to explain what's going on and then there's someone to tell me hey your mom is going above and beyond try and make it easier for her you know um, your sisters are trying their best to you know fill in a gap or try to to show you that you're not missing anything try to understand and try to be more reasonable i mean being a kid yeah being reasonable is not associated yeah. with kids but they need yeah. to know that the world the world has their back right the, your parents are there try to make it easy i mean i wish i made it easier for my mom and i say there are tons of things i did tons of things i said to her tons of things i thought that during that time i wish i never did because nishakwa mkubwa na realize what was going on and what she was trying to do i wish that those who are going through it right now know that their moms their sisters their elder brothers their uncles are doing a huge huge do- job for someone that left you know someone that left a huge gap in their lives yeah. and they should try and understand and try to grasp as much knowledge as they can kipindicho wanapokuwa kwa sababu honestly ukishakuwa mtu mzima sasa hizi ni ushauri utaupewa ni kwamba you need to unpack you need to unwind and you need to understand before you you know you commit to another generation you you start creating another generation but the people who really need that information who really need to be told on that they need to, to to take care of themselves better or like understand what their parents are going through is the kids right now and i wish this episode would be like they would be listening to it because about you this episode is like more what was him honestly but the kids that are going through it or if you're a brother to a younger brother try and be as 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 there as possible you know um and that's it from my side and uh, and i would like to say something yeah somebody um before nadia winds up it's when i'm telling me and be kid to you talked about your mom that the things you put her through when i'm telling me and be kid to um because of corona they are finding paka save to got no ngana and then kwa no ngana pia about some of the things i made my mom go through and you know as as a, as a boy growing yeah. up with come up i come my cop if this is what you can do go to your mom mama ngo ko morogoro ko kanambe washa gari nenda morogoro just sit her down and just say i'm sorry don't explain anything just say mom i turned out to right i turned out great na jua kazi ile ifanya i wish kuna vitu nisinge vifanya huko nyuma but i want you to know kwamba i apologize for all the things i put you through i am sorry and mothers being mothers i'm sure i any i already see the reaction it took kuwa lakini for me it was how she said it now and then it hit me kwamba yeah i've actually never done that but that is something that i should do and this is something for everybody who's listening kupata baraka za wazazetu this is one of the things that maybe you should do you should think about it man as well yeah you know? i mean i mean you, i sp- you I, sp- I, sp- surprised. I spoke to my mom a couple of times you know i've showed i've shown gratitude and sometimes i would say something really emotional and she would be like I didn't know you have that emotional side to you. And I'm like, yo, I should have shown this way early in my life, you know, you know right? I I wish I had yeah. this emotional intelligence yeah. when I was younger. I had I had the IQ, but the but the emotional intelligence and everything that came way later and it came at a difficult time for me. So I would say like yeah, I, I would definitely sit down my I would sit my mom down and you know, apologize for everything. But I wish I had this emotional intelligence when I was younger and that's it. Man, yeah. yeah. If you know better, you do better. We didn't know any, we didn't know better back then, man. So it's so good. It's so good. And that is why we have the, we having this kind of talk. Like you say for the next generation of monotuskiliza, they should know kwamba dunia 
Aishi, your life goes on and you you have to find a way to make it. Nadia, what is one thing that you'd like people to take from this from today's episode? I think one thing to take is one um have any one yeah fathers are important okay we can acknowledge that but fathers are flawed hopefully everyone who's listening is going to be a better father and so i know we, we put parents on a pedestal a lot especially as children um and sometimes we continue to put them on a pedestal even once we are adults i think what i want people to take away to take away from the session one is that no one is on a pedestal you know parents mess up sometimes they they are also just trying to find their way around you know they're flawed human beings that's one so that once once we look at it from that angle then we become able to accept their flaws and their blunders two um acknowledge your 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 anger or your emotions or your a fear or your sadness acknowledge it say whatever emotion that you're feeling when it comes to losing a parent either from them either walking out or from them just disappearing from from your life acknowledge the emotions that 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 situation or that that action has caused um we tend to ignore our emotions and sometimes we like okay i i don't need to why why do why should i feel like this i know to mongelea one one aspect that like Frederick you say you feel indifferent like there's nothing that you feel about your dad and Michael the the person you spoke to Akasema am i weird for not feeling anything that that this person has passed away but it's also true for people who their parents or their father walked out but they still feel very strongly when something happens to them they strongly feel the emotionally they their emotions are quite strong towards this parent whom in all aspects they should not feel anything toward and all of it is valid the indifference the not feeling anything and the feeling towards this, this parent who walked who walked out or who is absent all of it is valid so acknowledge your emotions um, i think is the second takeaway for me it's one they're not they're not superheroes even though as children we love to think of our parents as such they're not um they're flawed human beings who are you know just like any of us they can commit sins and errors and the imperfect. Now Pia, we need to start acknowledging our emotions more. I think and if there's any parents listening, we need to learn how to be emotionally intelligent parents. It's not enough to just be a present parent. You need to be an emotionally intelligent present parent because <laughs> that's one way that we will help our children um uh, navigate and grow into emotionally intelligent human beings too. So yeah those are my my takeaways. Thank you Ricky thank you for doing this man. Thank you sana sana for doing this and um we appreciate you because opening up na vitu kama hivi najua sio rahisi it takes a lot of courage but thank you for doing this with us today. No worries man. Yes, Thanks for thank having you. me. Yeah so we appreciate that. And uh, again kama unataka ku ku umependa ushauri wa Nadia and you feel like you need some professional um 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 conversations unaweza kumpata kupitia account yake ya Twitter na Instagram ni Amoni Mind Matters TZ Mind Matters TZ ukiingia pale poja kwa moja utaenda kwenye bio yake you get the link itakupeleka mpaka kwenye website as for us we are on Twitter and Instagram at men the podcast mimi naitwa Michael Baruti so i think from both me and Nadia till next time and thank you for listening Ricky stay safe stay corona free man and <laughs> by the way shout out to shout out to the podcast my guy I like hey man, hey. I, I, I just I just started uh, speaking about football, you know. Uh I, I got it from my dad. Um but yeah, I I, I started talking about football uh, on my podcast. Um it's tough man. Uh, following through what you're doing, I I thought it was easy but it's tough uh, doing a podcast, but uh, I had fun. Oh, dope man, dope man. The name of your football is Mad About Football. The name of the podcast is Mad About Football. Yep, yeah, Mad About Football. It's like uh, it's going to be on Spotify, uh, audio mark for those who don't have Spotify, so it's going to be out there. Yeah so yeah um mad about football Ricky has his own podcast and I'm viewing a sound kama mimi so he should feel good about it but <laughs> <laughs> apparently but, some girls were complaining that to ta changanya today with, with, with this podcast but fingers crossed that we don't sound too much alike <laughs> I, I, I pray I pray to so shout out for you and your podcast man I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big football fan so obviously I'm listening so and it's weird hearing you speak in Swahili throughout But hey, hey man, sio rahisi sio rahisi but Mungu anasaidia. Mungu anasaidia. 
Thank you for doing this and good luck on your podcast. We'll be watching you. Talk about Patria. Nadia, thank you for coming through as always, man. Thanks, right, Frederick. Go, I'm go. waiting for uh, your insights on what your father says. The football. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, my sister, literally my sister is at KCMC Moshi. So she's close by. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her, like, yo, connect me, connect me to dad. And I got a question to ask him. Um, yeah. But she's probably <laughs> going to listen to this episode. And she's, she's going she's gonna to be wild out to this episode. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for, for, for making me do this anyways. Yeah, thanks, man. Till next time, we are Men, 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 the podcast. Podcast, 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 podcast.